than Lehi's family preserving the scriptures in the form of the brass plates, the scriptures preserved them. What they had to do is continually return back to the plates of brass, continually return back to their own religious sensibilities to, to survive in this kind of society. The brass plates were immensely important, uh, crucially important. We know what happened to the Mulekites who brought nothing with them, no scriptures with them. They lost their language, they lost their identity in a sense, they lost their memory of who they were, and they lost their religion. These brass plates play the same role in their society that scriptures play in our society. That is, they enlarge our memory. They remind us of God's dealings with, uh, with his children in the past. And with that, there is a reminder that even in a new world and a new environment, the God of Israel is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his spirit is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's surprising how the people in the new world, how Lehi's family lived the law of Moses in its purity knowing why it was given. They look forward to Christ. They look forward to a Messiah who is named for them in the early pages of the Book of Mormon. All through the Book of Mormon, beginning with the first generation, there is the overlay of the promise of Christ. Lehi had a clearer notion because of revelation that had been given to him specifically about the coming of a Messiah. And so the, the, the Lehites, the Nephites, understand better than Israelites did in the Old Testament as we have it, that the law of Moses was not an end in itself, but a pointer to something else, that the sacrifices pointed to a great sacrifice yet to come. They, they saw the law of Moses as something in need of fulfillment, um, not something they were to keep until the end of time. 